Hello, this is Dr. Paul Dyer. Welcome to Weekly Wednesday, and I have Miss Perfecta on the line from Nigeria. And Perfecta, I know you're a naturopathic doctor, and on Weekly Wednesday, so what I'd like to do is educate people on natural health and education. So tell us how your practice is going in Nigeria. Oh, so far, so good. It's been great. Well, but although there are so many challenges that we face here in Nigeria because it's still an upcoming industry, it's not yet global. So, and a lot of people are used to the um, orthodox medicine or orthodox way of treatment, but it's been progressive. So we treat patients um, at the clinic with um, natural medicine and other therapies like acupuncture, coping therapy, and the likes of that. You know, the one thing about natural therapy or natural health or natural sciences that people really don't understand is how it works. Now, have you seen an increased um, health rate change in Nigeria with the with the with the doctoring you've been doing? Well, um, it, like I said before, it's progressing. That means um, the people that mostly come are those that are tired of the orthodox way of treatment. That is, they have gone through a series of treatments and they they are like really tired, and then they want to really get well. So they come to us and we have to start over treating them and teaching them. Like you said, it's lack of information. They're not used to how it works. They know how, um, they are used to the quick relief of pills and they don't understand that in natural medicine, it doesn't just occur immediately. It has to change. You have to change your routine, your lifestyle. You have to know like the history of the patient and how long the particular ailment has attracted the patient. So it's not, yeah, easy for us, but we're working on it. So I know here in the in the West, in the United States, that um, getting people oh. to understand and educate them about how they can live better, what they could do better, what some of the, like in Nigeria, most of the people in the United States don't know what Nigeria looks like, have never been there. So tell us about the cultural differences. Okay, in Nigeria here, it's, it's quite different than over there. We are used to a certain lifestyle, certain way of living. That's from our forefathers and the way they live, the way we eat and the way we think, the way we react to things that are quite different. We are not so used to um, the healthy living. I would say um, a particular percentage, I could say 10% of people here are used to the elderly living, but the rest 90% are still struggling to adapt to it because they haven't had um, situations where they have to change their entire diet, having to stop one certain way of eating, living, and everything based on um, to improve their health. So it's still growing. So, Hello? yeah, so here now, I know many cultures, even the United States, don't like black women telling people what to do. So how is that going over for you being a black woman in Nigeria, helping the men, the women? Is that still, is that an issue? Is that difficulty? What's the... Hello? Hello? You being a black woman in Nigeria, okay. you being a black woman in Nigeria, how is that, is that, a, is that, is that, do you find that difficult? Do you find that a troublesome? What? Yes, it is, it is. Men who don't really like, like you telling them what to do, they don't, but I feel they are open to um, negotiations or they are open to communication, like educating them, as if you have to educate them and you have to tell them reasons why they have to do what they have to do. So they are open to that, but it takes a whole lot for you to for them to agree to whatever you say. You know, it's sad because the men here in the United States, are, whether it be black men, white men, mostly black men are not taught how to, one, uh, know their emotions. They don't like to be told about their health and their, and, their, and their well-beings. And they definitely don't like to be told specifically from women. And I think that's a cultural downfall we've had here. Now, can that, how is that changing in Nigeria? Because it needs to change all over Africa, but is that able to change in Nigeria slowly but surely, or is it just, is it just, is it tough? It, it, it's possible to change, but it's going to be, it's going to be step by step. It has to be a process. 
you have to start from somewhere. You don't just expect everyone to accept what you have to say. You don't expect everyone to just accept it. So you have to continually educate them on this aspect. You have to continually educate them on the right held religion. So then they would adapt to it gradually. But I think it's a growing process and it can totally be implemented. What's some of the, the what's some of the like I know here in the United States people aren't drinking clean fresh water and a lot of their mm -hmm. pH balances are off and that's why it's causing a lot of sicknesses just through cellular structure. What's what's the water what's the water issue in Nigeria? How is that going? Well, we um, most likely pick um the or um, tap water. So we take tap water. We, um, well, most likely we take tap water here, but for the um, nutrition, the diet, we still struggle with the balanced diet because our diet is a bit shaky. It's not well structured yet. We don't follow. We don't follow um, a particular layout that is quite healthy for our lifestyle. What's some of the things that you want to work on that, um, I know working on health, education, educating women, the children, men, I know that's a whole big task to do all by yourself. Is there like a community organization that you're working with at all, or are you doing this all on your own? No, I'm not doing it on my own. I have um, fellow natural parts here, and I work seriously with a company that um, specializes on alternative medicine industry and what I'm trying to do right now is educate as much as I can mm -hmm. through um, social media one-on-one -on -one facial talk and as much as I can educate them because I feel most of the reasons why we fall sick is based on what we eat and it's because they're not allowing their food to be their medicine that's why they keep falling sick so most times they don't know when to eat when not to eat, what to eat, and they don't even allow, they, they are most likely always eating on the go. They don't allow the break for the digestion process to take place. And then when they keep eating, 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 and most likely eating the wrong thing, it just all leads to diseases and many complications. So what I need to work on personally, as much as I can, is educate them on their nutrition, their diet, and how they can work on it so that it can aid their self capabilities of the budget. You know, it's sad to think that, you know, the simplest things we can do as human beings is to eat right. And 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 that would help us live right and that would help us be blessed and fruitful and 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 we're still educating people on the simplest things is don't eat food, learn to digest and how about just be happy? You know, laugh a little bit more. <laughs> you know, we just yeah. don't we don't laugh and smile enough. We we seem to be always troubled in our yeah. minds, and that and that causes a lot of troubles in our hearts. Yeah, yeah. I think recently I was talking to somebody about forgiveness. I was I, I was talking about um, when you have like this high blood pressure or stuff like that. So most times you're always worrying. And you have so many things in your mind, you're depressed and all, all that stuff. And coupled with that, you already don't tend to calm down as in get like forgive people and just really even create an environment for yourself to get healed. So it's still something we're working on. Well, thank you, Ms. Perfecta. I know um, your time is precious and, and our connection is great. And, you know, us talking together and partnership up between the United States and Nigeria is going to be a great thing. And I just think it's a blessing that you were able to be on Dr. Paul Weekly with me. And we, we're, we're going to have this relationship for a long time. So God bless, girl. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. All right. We will be talking to you later. If you need anything, you can always let us know here. So thank you, people, for listening to Dr. Paul with Wednesday Weekly. You can always catch me on drpaulholisticscience.com. You can always contact me on my emails, drpaulwdyer at gmail.com. Thank you, Ms. Perfecto. We will talk to you later. All right.